Alrighty, so hi everyone. I'm Delaney and I'm going to be talking about ketomorpha today. So first of all, from algebase you can see that it's in eukaryota, kingdom plantae, phylum Orophyta, class Ovophyceae, order Cotophorales, and family Cotophoras. We all know how to say that, except for mm -hmm. me apparently. And then the genus, of course, Ketomorpha. And then according to algae base, there's 107 different species, but they also had some repeat species on there, so I'm not sure if people just rediscovered them or restated them and they just had some duplicates, but I just counted 107 of them. And so for Hawaiian species, I looked at three different sources, and all of the different sources said a different thing about how many species were present in Hawaii. So one of them said six, one said five, and one said three. So I found as many as I could, which were five. So we have the C. Aurea C. Atenia, which is this one on the last slide. This is the Atenia one. We have C. Bacitrosa, C. Linguistica, which is this one, and then C. Indica. And so I decided to just focus on two that we have here, since I didn't think we'd have enough time to go through all five. So for C. Atenia, it's the brush chemorpha, so you can say it's like the spiky troll hair, that's what it was said in our dichotomy key that we had. And it grows on rocks or in like a very firm substrate because it has to hold on to something, and it's in high wave action areas because it's really resilient. And it's bright green, like the troll hair tufts, and it usually grows to about 10 centimeters tall, so it's pretty big, you can see it very well. And then this one over here, our matte ketomorpha, this one grows usually closer to like sandy places. It doesn't really need a strong hold fast. It doesn't have to launch too strong or anything, and it's in patches or mats. And usually each individual is about two millimeters, or 10, 10 millimeters tall. Okay, so these are the key features that I have here. So they're multinucleate, multicellular filaments. They're unbranched, and they're kind of spiky looking. And then their life history is sporangiosis with alternation of generations. And then here, you can't really see my little, I believe this is dangling all my study. So right here, this is the gametangia forming. So you can see each of these little pockets is a little gametangia. And then this is one that's like erupted, and it has two flagella. And then over time, it'll start to get more on each side, and it'll just accumulate a lot more flagella. Okay, so in one of the important studies that I was looking at, I couldn't really find anything here in Hawaii regarding this that was super interesting. So I looked at a few others. This one was in Australia, showing that ketomorpha does have, when it has different compounds extracted, it has antioxidant activity against shrimp pathogens. So for this one, there were 16 bioactive compounds that were isolated from the ketomorpha, and then in specific, like the ethanol extract was the one that worked the best. So here you can see the total antioxidant activity on this axis, axis, and then down here is the sample concentration. So with the higher concentration of the ethanol extract, there was more antioxidant activity. And then over here, this is the total polyphenol content, which is the TPC right here, and then the sample concentration, so you can see that increases as well. And then, like I said before, it has antibacterial properties that help the infected shrimp fight this pathogen. Okay, and then it was also shown in a study to have anti-diabetic properties. This was a really long paper, and there's a bunch of different graphs, but I thought this was kind of like the easiest one to understand. So what they found is that when they dried the ketomorpha and extracted different um, enzymes from it, there was different anti-diabetic activity. So you can see here is the inhibition percent, which gets up to almost 50, which is pretty high. And then these are the different um, isolations from the ketomorpha. And 